Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Um, today we have Karen Mai. Karen is from Hong Kong, so we'll be able to see and talk with her a little about her wonderful art. Um, I'm still traveling in Peru. Um, miss all of you, but I'm glad that uh, Zoom and Facebook allow us to communicate wherever in the world we may be. So with that, um, Karen, hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, John. Hello. So Karen is going to be doing a demonstration today and uh, answering questions as you have them. And we'll be doing, a, we're looking at a slideshow mm -hmm. um, that uh, Karen has put together. Yeah. Um, you may start the share screen now, Karen. Um, I cannot share screen. Um, it's enabled. Try again. I can help. Oh, we, okay. There you go. Oh, there we go. You can see it? Yep. Okay. Great. I see um, it. Yeah. So, hello, I'm Karen from Hong Kong. I like painting a wide range of subjects. So, for the sample today, I think I will just, uh, I chose some work that can show some different sources of my inspiration. Hopefully, it will be helpful. Um, so firstly is uh, from life, of course. Um, so for example, I like uh, watching people. These are from my sketchbooks. These live sketches were done with a brush pen. And then I also like watching and sketching people at cafes, at concerts, concerts and then uh, people at work. And this one was done uh, during a, a Zoom model session. And... Um, this one is giant saw at sunset. It has received an award at this year's Pennsylvania Watercolor Society's International Exhibition. I put it here because I want to show for some of my paintings. I may have uh, some on occasion sketches beforehand. So this model one was done at a uh, sawmill in Hong Kong. And I was uh, attracted by this giant saw. According to the owner, um, this saw was quite uh, useful, very powerful decades ago, but with the uh, technological changes, uh, it was not really at this point anymore. But to me, it's more like, um, like it feels like a hero that's uh, going old. Um, so I managed to find uh, and go to capture this scene on location, make some changes of the color and arrangement of the objects, but. Uh, it's really when I got home, I have more time to think about uh, how to, for example, add some mood to this painting, to, to the work. So I did this painting. So I painted uh, it mostly in dark, except the uh, sun, uh, sunlight, uh, sorry, sunset light uh, coming from the window of the sawmill. So uh, giant saw at sunset. Uh, before this painting, I also done two other paintings inspired by the sawmill. You can check my uh, website or uh, social media for that. Um, just trying to say for each of them, I'm like, trying to convey a different, a slightly different mood. So, for example, for one of them, um, I had a dot in the uh, in the middle of the sawmill with um, the set covered mostly by warm interior light, so it feels. It has a more uh, uh, cozy and then at ease feeling. So I enjoy uh, painting and sketching on location and also studio work because I think both help me grow as an artist in different aspects. So on location, uh, with the time limit, we need to capture the scene, the light very quickly. So it's a good training for observation. But um, for studio work, uh, we have more time to think about the um, composition and then the mood and the design details and so on. So they're both uh, very helpful for me. These two were actually the first and second, my, my first and second painting of uh, open permatides. So on the left one, uh, left hand side is the, this was uh, the first one. It was uh, when, it was last year when I was preparing for a still live workshop for my online students. So for one of the session, I think it may be good to show how to paint 
uh, texture of foods. So, um, so why not do an uh, open paramatide, right? Um, so this work was um, uh, was accepted for the uh, RI, the Royal Institute of Painters in Watercolors uh, exhibition in London, and also uh, featured in the uh, Artist and Illustrator magazine. Um, on the right hand side, this was the actual demo for uh, the uh, for the workshop, and this one was in uh, NWS uh, International Exhibition. This piece was painted uh, last month, so when the weather gets cooler and uh, autumn has finally come, I feel inspired by the season. But I, uh, you know, in Hong Kong, there are not really so drastic changes in color in the leaves of the trees uh, outside. So I turn to the seasonal food to uh, find some opportunity to splash some autumn colors on the paper. Um, for today's demo, we do a similar piece, but uh, with a simpler uh, composition due to time constraints. Three stages of guinea. So this has won the award in the current uh, Northwest Watercolor Society International Exhibition. I put it here because the inspiration uh, inspiration is a bit uh, special. It comes in two direction. On the one hand, uh, when I was a young kid, when I first saw the the painting, the Three Ages of Women by uh, Gustav Klimt, somehow the image and the title were engraved in my mind. On the other hand, uh, last year when I was preparing for my uh, flower painting workshop, I bought a lot of flowers and then um, took photos to prepare for the workshop. Um, but I got to like witness a, a lot of blooming and withering of the flowers in such a short period of time. And a little, it was a little bit sad. So I think maybe I would paint uh, uh, the three ages of some flower one day. And then, uh, yeah, this year when I um, won the um, flower painting workshop and uh, prepared more uh, photos, including some withering peony, so I just decided to paint the three ages of peony. Of course, uh, it still took me some time to come up with the idea of portraying this uh, blooming stage as a, a frame painting. So this entire set was imaginary. Each, paint, uh, each flower here, probably comes from a different photo I took. So I put them together and add the bottle and the frames and also uh, add a little bit uh, Jimmy background. Um, yeah, the technical challenge will be uh, making sure the lighting look consistent and also uh, putting a proper sense of uh, depth. These are also flower paintings, but the inspiration, uh, the inspiration was different. Uh, each one was painted mainly because I want to use a certain color. So for example, this one uh, the, the, was the uh, cream gold, and this one was the bloodstone. So beautiful color, beautiful granulation. I uh, just want, uh, mainly want to use the color in the painting. So that's the inspiration for this piece. Um, and for this one, I've always wanted to paint a flower piece with some bright blue background. And then uh, this one, I find maybe uh, it can go well with this white necklace with purple edges. So the blue was mainly cobalt uh, blue plus um, lavender. I also want to share two of the series. Um, I want to work more on recently. So the first one is Whitworth. So this is just uh, repainting uh, one of my older words. Uh, it could be because like in the, the this example is because uh, in the first version two years ago, I wasn't uh, happy with some part of it. So I always have the in, uh, plan to repaint it. So finally did this uh, this year, happy with it happier with it than the first version, but uh, maybe I will paint another version. I don't know. Yeah, so on the right hand side, this, uh, I don't know whether anyone work, uh, <laughs> record the uh, first version. It, it, it's the uh, last formula. It's still the uh, cover photo of my Facebook page. 
Um, that one was done in 2018, and it has uh, overall, overall mostly gray, bluish, purplish uh, tone. So um, the painting was in uh, the RI and also AWS uh, exhibitions. But this year, when I look at it again, so I just asked whether I can ask myself whether I can paint it in another way. So this one uses a very different palettes and also a different paper. This was on uh, hot press. So the tools we use, the paint, the paper, or other tools actually can also serve as uh, inspirations. Um, okay. Um, another series is um, about capturing the vivid market scenes in Hong Kong. I uh, actually done a few of these market studies on various paper. These are two uh, examples. Um, each store really have their own characters, and it's really fun and challenging trying to uh, rearrange the shapes, the colors, and then trying to portray uh, beauty from this so-called quote unquote messy scenes um, is always um, challenging, but uh, interesting to do. And then these are just some example from some, uh, some demos from my online workshop. Um, so we had uh, many different themes. We have still life, flower, uh, we have architecture, people sketching, portrait painting. We mm -hmm. also have cat painting, dog painting, landscape, and so on. So I, I see holding online workshop as also an important opportunity for me to push myself to like grow out of my comfort zone, maybe try some uh, new subjects, right? And uh, so painting the new subject I've never painted before, or maybe painting uh, an older subject in a new way, as in the reverse series case, I think it's like uh, trying to explore a part of me that is even unknown to me, because beforehand I cannot fully envision what the final result will be. So it's always interesting and challenging. So if you want to see more of my work, this is the handle for my art page on Instagram and Facebook. I also have pages for my fashion illustration, figure drawing, and actually this week I also have a new page uh, with, uh, for my calligraphy. Anyway, so this QR code just links to a page on my website that list the links for the Instagram and uh, Facebook page of my art account. So from there, you can also find my other accounts as well. I also put a link for downloading today's reference photo. So yeah, just go here if you want to ping it along. Any questions? Your works are brilliant. Karen. Thank you. Brilliant job. And the way you get the paper white in a, you know, the, you capture the light, it's mind blowing. Thank you, Alas. So if you have any questions and you're on Zoom, you'll be able to ask Karen directly. And then if you're on Facebook, um, I'm in my hotel room. I can't see Facebook, so I'm going to ask Gabriel and Giovanni and Matiza and um, Anna if they would uh, bring the questions over so Anna could hear them and, and answer them. Cameron, um, yeah, you yes, want to help uh, do this? Stop the share screen so that we could put you on spot. There you go. Ah, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Should I switch to my best now? Yeah, there. Yeah. 
they can see my desk, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, as mentioned, we were playing some pumpkins, squash, and um, corns and peppers. Um, due to the time constraint, I will actually ignore some of the objects here. So basically, we'll do away with this things and we will paint only one orange one yeah so i already did the um, pencil drawing beforehand hopefully you can see it Um, okay. Okay, so maybe I will um, talk about the colors I will use for this one. This is my little palette. I also have other colors I, I may use for different paintings, but here contains uh, some of those I use quite a lot. So for today, I will use uh, this Hansen yellow, either medium or deep. And we have the transparent uh, pyro orange, permanent alistarine uh, crimson, and then opera pink, yellow ochre. We also use um, cobalt blue, and then maybe a bit of French um, ultramarine. Uh, I will also use uh, moon glow. And then for brushes, in general, I actually have many different kinds of brushes. Um, I have many, many <laughs> flat brushes uh, with different softness, right? Uh, some are very stiff and some are softer. Um, and then, but for, uh, and I also have uh, more brushes. And then uh, this one is the uh, brush for traditional Chinese painting or calligraphy. So for today, I think I will mainly use um, this flat brush, it's colder. And then I'll turn it on the background, the larger areas. And then I will also use this one calligraphy uh, brush. Um, so, the good sign of it is that you can change the shape of the brush. You can use it like a flat brush or whatever, and also you can spread the hair and uh, create some texture. The best side with this one is um, it loses hair a lot. Uh, so to be honest, but anyway, and then I have um, more version of it for the details. And then another escoder. Um, but I think I will use this one mainly to uh, wash, lift some uh, white areas or um, soften some edges. So probably mainly this four for today. Any questions? Um. Aaron, what yeah, size what were the brushes? The brushes, or which one? Uh, are you asking about the brushes? Uh, can you tell us the sizes? This is uh, 15, uh, yeah, the squirrel, uh, as colder. This one, <laughs> I, I can't see the numbers anymore, they are all gone. <laughs> um, so maybe give you a sense of the relative size. So this two, yeah, I don't think they have size on it. So I will, I will start by painting a bit of the cloth here because I want to distinguish the, the white in the cloth and the white in the plates. So the plate is a little bit colder. So for so I would just lift out the uh, white of the paper for the plate and then I will paint the white for the cloth here. So I will use mainly yellow ochre. Okay. 
Let me set my palettes. <clears throat> Which paper are you using? Oh, I'm using waterfall, and then this is 12 okay. by 16 inches. This is 12, yeah. So yellow ochre, personal thank bed. Uh, thank you. So plus cobalt blue, a little bit more water because it's not really that dark. So I will paint a bit mainly around here so that they will have some difference from the white of the plates. So it really depends on you um, because here it has been rainy these days. So I don't want to wait too long for the uh, uh, water to dry. So I maybe I'm not applied it to the entire area of the cloth. So maybe just around the plate here. Okay, so I would then go on to put down some similar colors, for example, in the cons on the left hand side. So living out a little bit wide area uh, here. And then I will do the orange here because I want it to have a longer time to dry. So I'm using the Hansel yellow plus the transparent pearl orange. I don't know whether you can see the other side of the palette. Uh, okay. So basically just this two. So for the pumpkin here, I actually make the direction a bit turn towards the center for the composition. And then I will cover almost the entire area but leaving out some highlights around here. Oh, maybe I will just stand. <laughs> um, I will also do the fresh on the left hand side at the same time. So just adding that a bit more yellow. This is actually the color for the seat here. So a bit lighter. I will apply another wash of uh, more vibrant yellow and this dry.
Karen, there's a message for you from Susan. She said she loves watching your brush strokes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, you probably see some hair on that paper as well. That's from my brushes. <laughs> Okay, this, yeah, quickly put down. All the colors as well. I actually use a lot of the uh, paper tissue as well to pick up the pink. And then this is very wet. So uh, wait for it to dry a bit. Maybe I will do the cones now. We have already some light uh, yellow ochre, plus a bit cobalt. Now I'm maybe adding a bit darker to paint the darker area. Oh, it's just too wet. So, And then I will also lay down the color for this green one. So yellow ochre. And then purple, I think I will add some jade eye. So again, leaving out the highlights and then cover the rest of the area. Karen, are you painting on a slope? Is your paper elevated? No, it's flat. Um, yeah, and then the peppers, so basically, they are all very wet, so I'm trying to paint some area that's not wet yet. And do wait a bit for the other areas. So this is um, the uh, alizarin crimson plus a bit uh, opera pink.
And then I think I will put on some car shadow here because it's not connected to the other web areas yet. Um, sorry. So for the car shadow, I use cobalt blue, point glow, and a little bit get okay. Just Karen, do you have a favorite subject? Wow, so many. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do paint many different subjects. Um, yeah. Karen, have you yes. found that your have you found that your color preferences have changed over time? And are you willing to talk a little bit about your color choice and how it has changed over time about that process? Well, um, I think on the palettes here, some of the colors about like 10, uh, probably I will use them in every painting. Um, but uh, there were so many different interesting colors to explore. So for uh, maybe for different paintings, I would try to incorporate uh, some one or two more uh, exciting colors, just like uh, what I show in the free uh, paintings of flowers in, in my slides. So each one was kind of comes from uh, the wish to paint to use a certain color. So, but um, yeah, uh, some of here, um, something I will use probably for most of the painting. I think it's still quite wet. We have a question on the chat for Karen asking, do you, from Jim, asking, do you regularly practice your drawing skills? Is drawing important? Yeah, of course, drawing is very important. Yeah, so of course, uh, in my slide, many shown the watercolor words, but of course I, I do drawing 
it in pencil, brush pen, or uh, pen, whatever tools. Yeah, drawing is really uh, important. Um, yeah, even if I don't have time to paint, I would like to draw, sketch something. And yeah, keep, keep observing it. Are you willing to also speak briefly about the meditative process? Because participating and watching you paint, I can see that this is also a meditation for you. Okay, so how do you feel about it? Well, I feel bad that I have to interrupt the process to ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think, yeah. Uh, well, of course, uh, in, in workshops and demo, it's more interpretive, but uh, if I'm doing it alone, it's really a meditation for me. So when, when you're into it, so you really don't quite think about any other things. Huh? Yeah. And I have a silly question that we sometimes ask our fellow artists. Do you have a pet or a small animal that uh, keeps you company while you're painting and creating? No, for the moment, I don't have pets uh, in the house. When I, yeah, animals, when I was young, I, I do have, uh, I do have, uh, I do have uh, cats, yeah, but yeah. I will let this dry a bit because I want a uh, very sharp edges of the uh, for the car shadow here. So I paint. I think I will just go to paint this car shadow. A fun fact about cats is uh, here in the United States they say meow. And then in Japan, I believe it's a uh, Nihao. No, that's Chinese. <laughs> that can't be in Japan, right? <laughs> <laughs> On Facebook, Raphael is asking Karen, do you plan everything exactly or are you going with the flow? I think it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, I don't think, uh, well, for my, for, for my work, uh, I don't, I can't really plan uh, perfectly every time, right? Um, yeah, that's also the charm of uh, watercolor. You, you always have some, something unpredictable in the process. Um, I do sometimes do a small planning sketch but that's mainly for designing the composition and so on, yeah. Um, and then before I put down the drawing for the larger painting, but uh, as, as the process goes on, I may actually change my mind in the process and, and actually make changes to the initial plan as well. Karen, we had a question in the chat and it's from Patricia and it says, hi, Karen, I love your use of grays in many of your paintings. Is there a gray shade that you like to use or blend for backgrounds? The, the grays, um, actually can, I have missed many different grays in different paintings. So usually it's a combination of uh, different colors. Um, for background, it really depends. So again, for uh, in, in the example of the free flower painting, right? Um, so I said, sometimes I would like to use a certain color for that particular piece. So it may be different 
for a different painting. Um, so for example, here I'll make a many years uh, moon glow right, uh, here, but uh, maybe different for another painting. I think I'm also paying somewhere here. Originally, there was there were two more coins here, but you see, I actually added them away for the sake of time. We have another question on Facebook from Reginald asking, do you have pencil guide lines within your painting? I'm um, sorry, pencil what? Uh... Pencil guide lines. I think the question is, do you draw in pencil first? Ah. And... Yeah, yeah, here I have the pencil joining beforehand. I, I did it before the life right, to save a bit of time. But uh, I don't always do pencil drawing. So for example, uh, some of the flower painting you saw actually in one, one, one series of the flower painting workshop, we do all four demos uh, with the red water color. So there's no under drawing at all. So directly go with the brush on the paper. And for some of the, uh, for example, the uh, people's sketches, I actually like to use ballpoint pen instead of pencil. Uh, Did you say ballpoint pen instead of pencil? Yeah, for some of the sketches. Uh, uh, for this kind of larger painting, I use uh, pencil or even no uh, under drawing, but for some of the sketches in my sketchbook, for example, of people, uh, I sometimes use ballpoint pen. I actually prefer ballpoint pen to pencil in that case. So do you incorporate ballpoint pen with watercolors in your sketchbooks? That's so- uh, that's, The ballpoint pen was for the uh, under drawing, the drawing. So use ballpoint pen instead of pencil. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks for sharing that idea. Because I think it's quite convenient for sketches. I don't need to sharpen uh, the pencil away if I use ballpoint pen. And then they have some variation in, in the lines, right? Uh, I can do it very lightly uh, to, get, uh, the, to have uh, very thin lines, but also can push harder to have very dark and thick lines. So I think it's quite, I personally find uh, ballpoint pen quite Communion. We had a question on the chat asking uh, Karen if you finish your paintings all in one sitting or not, if it takes several days to finish. Well, it may differ for different paintings. Um, yeah, some really just take uh, yeah, one session, maybe two hours, but uh, for some paintings, for example, the sawmill ones, uh, I may actually do it quite slowly. Um, I will paint, for example, a while one day and then put it away and then look at it again the next day with fresh eyes. Um, and then it can last several days, although I don't really spend that much time each day to paint it. Yeah. 
but it gave me time to uh, think about it, whether I need to, for example, change anything. If I could piggyback on that question. So would you say you're a fast painter or a slow painter? I think I can do very fast. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so really, really depends on uh, the purpose of the sketch of painting. Um, for example, when you do people sketches on location, you have to be very fast, right? And, but um, some kind of the paintings that take uh, longer time, for example, those larger paintings with more details, more complex structure and planning, they also change like other dimensions of the skill set. So I think it's, uh, I think it's good to practice both. Karen, can we see the photo one more time that you're using? Yeah, so this is, this is the one. Um, yeah, I actually have the links uh, on my slides. Should I copy here the chat box? Anyone got my reference photo? Um, here. So in the chat box, uh, you can download the reference photo from the link. Thank you. Ken, how long would this, you know, I know you're leaving certain pieces out because of the time constraint. How long would a painting such as this take you? How much more time do I have? Um, yeah, I will probably. Actually, I already laid down most of the uh, larger areas. So I'm just waiting for some of the areas to dry before I can, for example, add the ducks. So here, I think maybe I can add it now. The dark areas of the fresh. Karen, there's a question in the chat from Mohammed. Uh, how do you overcome uh, cauliflowers that appear during painting? Um, getting to it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, some, some is okay because you anticipate you're paying for example, darker area here that will cover that. Otherwise, if you, it is happening in some area you don't want, you can fix it immediately when you saw it, but not now, it's already half dry now. And actually, if we, with no time constraint, we can actually uh, give it a bit more time to dry, and then we can kind of avoid most of these problems.
Karen, how wet would you say the orange is now? Oh, uh, what? Sorry. The orange. Yes. Uh, uh, how, how, uh, so, how, how wet, is, wet is the orange now? How wet is it's very wet. So I will wait for it a bit before I soften the edges. Otherwise, it just run into the entire lighter area. Karen, are you a fan of not using um, a hair dryer or heat gun? I usually don't use, yeah. So I will probably just let it dry slowly if I'm on my own. But yeah, but in a demo piece, uh, probably a little bit more just walking, uh, working, uh, jumping from one area to the next to find some drier area to work on now. For example, now, well, this is still quite wet. So let me, I just want to say I'm so impressed that you're painting at 3.21 a.m. <laughs> okay. It's okay as we can. Actually, in 2020 and 21, I actually stay up a lot for the uh, Zoom model session because they usually have, for example, in the US, UK. So it's like similar to this kind of uh, timing. But then I found uh, it's not really, uh, I can't do it repeatedly. We need to slip. Mm. Sometimes we have people that ask if you use masking fluid, but I think you're showing a great demonstration of how to save your whites without masking fluid. Yeah, I don't quite use masking fluid. Yeah, I think it's usually too sharp for me, yeah. I like the way you capture the light, you know, the bright light. Most of your painting which has got. It's very, very dynamic. Thank you. Still.
and your 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 piece here looks more pretty, a lot better than the picture. <laughs> Prettier than Thank the you. picture, in fact. <laughs> Karen, which paper size do you prefer working on? Um, this is 12 by 16. This is probably the size I work most in. Yeah. Gosh, I like how it's, it's really coming together. I love your masterful touch, the way you handle the sensitivity of the water to paint. Thank you. A little orange here. So Karen, we're at the we're at the bottom of the hour. And I wanted to ask you, would you, if you were to finish the painting, would you post it so we could all see the, the final the final um, result? Sure, sure. I like the way that it's it's the the purity of not using the 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 hair dryer, not using the masking fluid, <laughs> knowing how you save your wise. It's just as Gabriel was saying and others were saying that's just it's really wonderful to watch. It's a beautiful demo. So yes. fast. Yeah. Get more fans, new fans, Karen. Thank you. <laughs> we'll cut the messages in the chat. <clears throat> Karen, I noticed on your website, uh, people can email you for uh, to maybe see some of your past recording classes. Um. Well, yeah, so they are um, recordings uh, from some of my live workshop before. So people have the option to do the uh, recorded uh, workshop. Yeah. So if you're there, they're interested, you can just email me. I emailed you. <laughs> Thank you. because uh, for the online workshop, so it's able to, yeah, which uh, students from around the world and sometimes the time zone doesn't really work. So yeah, some participant will just do it with the recording. Oh, you're so wise.
don't know what happened there. You're in spotlight now, John. Okay. Can you put a, a side by side so we can see? Uh, sure, sure. There you go. Okay. So, Karen, I wanted to thank you very much. And thank you all that have uh, joined today. Um, your work is, is, is beautiful. I like how quickly it's coming together. I know it's uh, 45 minutes and 50 minutes is a very, very, very short time. Um, it's beautiful what you've done. So thank you very much, Karen. And thank you everybody for watching today. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. You are thank so you. welcome. Thank you, beautiful demonstration. Thank yes, you. No,